Divide and conquer is a military tactic which involves breaking a larger enemy force into smaller groups with less overall power, allowing them to be quickly overwhelmed before moving on to the next group. Yet it isn't just a military tactic, it's also used to try and weaken human rights movements. Enter, LGB without the T, a sad bid to isolate the trans community from the larger LGBT plus community, a movement which is, for all intents and purposes, a farce invented by Alex Sisset Men. And we'll discuss that in a second, though first, a quick content warning for the following. Transmisia. If you like our work, please consider supporting the channel via Patreon. You can also support us by liking, commenting, and sharing this video on social media. Hey there, my name is Ethel Thurston, she, her, they, them, and today we're returning to the myth of queer separatism. You see, for years now, the far-right anti-trans lobby in the UK has argued that your average cis lesbian, gay, and bisexual person no longer wants to be associated with the larger LGBT plus community, specifically the trans community. Indeed, hate groups such as the LGB Alliance, a group funded by the Christian far right, have long declared that they speak on behalf of the general lesbian, gay, and bisexual communities, and that they want out. In particular, they sold the narrative of lesbian v transfem antagonism, this idea that said communities are also with one another in their wants and needs. This, of course, is not supported by any evidence. In fact, the evidence entirely contradicts said claims. Take the research published earlier this year by LGBT Plus Youth Charity, Just Like Us, which surveyed 3,695 adults aged 18 to 25. Out of all the groups, a whopping 96% of lesbians stated that they were either supportive or very supportive of trans people, trans women included, compared to 89% of the general LGBT plus population and 69% for the non-LGBT plus population. There were only 4% of lesbians who viewed trans people either with indifference or disdain, the lowest number of any non-trans subsection of the LGBT plus community surveyed. Of course, there were some limitations with said research, namely how the people surveyed were from a very specific age range. That's why it's exciting to discover that, on the 11th of August 2023, YouGov released an article on what LGBT plus Britons thought the British public thought about them. In said article, they share the responses to various questions, including, quote, how positively or negatively would you say you personally view transgender people, end quote. And wouldn't you know it, 84% of cis lesbians, that is, lesbians who are not transgender, view trans people either positively or very positively, with a further 10% being indifferent. I would say that this was the highest of any group, were it not for the fact that 84% of cis bisexual women also view trans people positively, with a 2% difference in distribution between positively and very positively, yet 11% of cis bisexual women view trans people indifferently, meaning that, proportionally speaking, cis bisexual women were 1% less likely to view trans people either negatively or very negatively. In fact, only 1% of cis bisexual women view trans people very negatively, compared to 3% of cis lesbians. Meanwhile, 65% of both cis gay men and cis bisexual men view trans people either positively or very positively, which sounds like a big drop, until you realise that most of their difference went into their indifference, with 22% of cis gay men viewing trans people as such, compared to 26% of cis bisexual men. When it comes to hate in the lesbian, gay, and bisexual communities, cis gay men take the lead at 13%, followed by cis bisexual men at 9%, cis lesbians at 6%, and finally, cis bisexual women at 4%. For the entire cis, lesbian, gay, and bisexual community, this number averages to around 8% compared to a whopping 25% of all Britons. That means non-LGBT plus folk are three times more likely to be anti-trans than cis members of the lesbian, gay, and bisexual communities. This is not the first time we've seen these results. A 2020 survey carried out by YouGov found that the majority of cis women 
57%, supported trans people being allowed to self-ID, compared to just 43% of cis men. Meanwhile, only 21% of cis women said trans people shouldn't be able to self-ID, compared to 33% of cis men. This idea that the rights of trans people are at odds with the rights of women or the rights of lesbian, gay, and bisexual people is not a narrative that has its origins within said communities. It is an external narrative forced upon us, predominantly by allocyset men, looking to turn trans people into a justifiable outlet for their pent-up misogyny. This is a fact we see again and again in these results, and is something worth pointing out. Do not be suckered in by the lie. The lesbian, gay, and bisexual communities overwhelmingly reject the demands of allocyset men to separate themselves from the trans community. Though what do you think? Will this finally kill the lie that the lesbian, gay, and bisexual communities want to separate themselves from trans people? Do you think anyone actually buys said lie? Did you notice something I missed? If so, be sure to let me know down below. And if you appreciate what we do here and want to help out, please consider becoming one of our wonderful patrons who make our work possible. On that note, we'd just like to thank the following people. Matthew Kovac, Gert Van Voorst, Hannah Banghart, Marble Wings, Sosh Daniels, Flynn, Darnit Dante, and Higgins the Seagull. And for myself, Adita and Levi, take care now.